The John Birch Society Report. George Washington stated, truth will ultimately prevail where pain is taken to bring it to light. Truth is the major weapon of the John Birch Society Report. We will return after these words from our sponsor. The John Birch Society Report presents this weekly broadcast to bring you commentary and analysis of today's events. Our commentator today is Mr. Thomas J. Anderson, well-known columnist and humorist of Nashville, Tennessee, and president and editor-in-chief of Southern Farm Publications. Today, I want to talk especially to young people. I want to tell you young people what I wish I had known when I went out to face the cold, cruel world about 33 years ago with a diploma in one hand, that was what you would call in the olden days, if and when you graduate from college or from high school, that diploma does not mean you are educated. It means that you should now have enough appreciation of education to make you want to become educated. Your intellectual horizon should now have been raised so as to whet your appetite for knowledge, which you now should know where and how to get. The time has come, if you have not already done so, that you must make your own bargain with life. Neither your parents nor your government can do it for you. You can do and be almost anything you want to do and be badly enough to make the necessary all-out effort and sacrifices. Try to decide now what you most want from life. And remember, those who merely chase happiness never catch up with it. Life has its sunshine and its shadows, its peaks and its valleys. This is still the only country in the world where anybody who's got what it takes and gives what it takes, can rise from the bottom to the top. Most great deeds are mainly mixtures of courage and sweat. There are few born geniuses. Your albatross could well be too much opportunity instead of too little, too much too easy. Opportunity can make and break. Money and luxurious living are false gods for hardship builds character like forging builds steel. You can't get to the promised land without going through the wilderness. Our republic was built on individual freedom, individual opportunity, and individual responsibility. Wonder what Abraham Lincoln would have done if he had have had the opportunity that you have. Lincoln, as a boy, read books by the light of an open fire and had only about three years of formal schooling. No struggle, no Lincoln. No wilderness, no Moses. No cross, no Christ. No adversity, no victory. Mark Twain said, Work consists of whatever a body is obliged to do, and play consists of whatever a body is not obliged to do. Work is a mental attitude. Tom Sawyer had to whitewash the fence, but by pretending it was really fun, he not only got his friends to do the job for him, but he made them pay for the privilege. Work, not play, is the most truly satisfying thing in life. This is my work, my blessing, not my doom. The most harassing task in operating a business today is not finding people with the right degrees, nor the right ability, nor the right experience even. It is finding people who really want to work. When you go job hunting, ask, what can I do for you, instead of what can you do for me? As you go through life, neither be afraid of change nor for change for change's sake. The only thing that's sure in this world is change. And goodness knows there's plenty that needs changing. The American way of life has never been equaled. Be sure you have something better before you agree to a change. Some of the so-called progressive ideas, such as socialism to replace capitalism, so-called humanism or modernism to replace Christianity, would set us back almost 2,000 years. 
For it was that long ago that socialism, humanism, and modernism were first proven failures. My generation, the generation many of your parents belong to, has done a lousy job for you. We sacrificed great hunks of the individual freedoms your forefathers fought and died for. We swapped them for government-guaranteed, womb-to-tomb security, so-called. We ate up not only our seed corn, but part of yours. In the welfare state, the politicians and the bureaucrats get well, and you pay the fare, eventually, if not now. Remember that the politician who will sell his soul for a vote will do the same for a free vacation. A man who will steal an election will steal anything. A man who will steal for you will also steal from you. A man who will lie to the voters will lie to his banker, his minister, and to his wife and children. Government does not and cannot create great societies. Individuals create great societies, not vice versa. The only great societies in history have been free societies in which the individual had maximum rights and privileges and was the master and not the servant of government. Freedom does not perpetuate itself. Daniel Webster declared, God grants liberty to those who love it and are always ready to guard and defend it. There is no freedom for the weak. The meek will inherit the earth, but not the weak. A French economist once said, the state is the great fiction through which everyone attempts to live at the expense of everyone else. That's also a good definition of federal aid. Everything must be paid for, either in material or psychic coin. There is no such thing as a free lunch. The government has no authority and no right, constitutional or otherwise, to provide anybody with freedom from fear, freedom from want, freedom from doctors and hospital bills, freedom from unemployment. Don't let the collectivists cradle to grave you. If we ever want freedom from responsibility more than we want freedom of opportunity, we will cease to be a free people. Prisoners have security. Life termers really have it made. You can't have freedom and security. As you begin your serious bargain with life, never forget that the only security you can ever have is the security within yourself. Security, like happiness, can neither be bought nor given. Each of us has to earn our own. Government can give you nothing which it does not first take from someone else. For government is essentially a parasite. It creates nothing. It lives off of the creations of others. Generally speaking, government is your enemy, not your friend, because it's like a predatory male. It'll go as far as the female will let it. It has already gone too far. If you want your government to be your slave and not your master, you must understand it, participate in it, distrust it, control it. For the bigger it is, the littler you are. As you go through life, make all of life's bargains on top of the table, not under it. The best payola you can ever get is your own self-respect. Be a sovereign individual, not just a member of the mob. The great things of the world are accomplished by a relatively few individuals, not by the mass. Don't go along with the crowd when the crowd is headed toward the precipice. Going along with the crowd is taking the easy, cowardly way. Is that what Jesus did, or Moses, or Christopher Columbus, Patrick Henry, Robert E. Lee, General MacArthur? No. Pontius Pilate went along with the crowd, pleased the mob. In the end, somehow and somewhere, those who take the easy way will always have to pay the price. Like an easy woman, someday they'll find that the easiest are soonest left unloved. Someday they'll learn that you can't lie with the hounds without getting up with fleas. Someday it'll burst upon their consciousness, if not their conscience, 
that a people who lack the morality to stand on their feet and say no will someday have to say yes on their knees. Once a father took his little boy with him to steal some corn. As the man prepared to put the corn into the bag, he looked around anxiously to see if anyone was watching. Quick, son, open the bag, he said. The little boy replied, Daddy, you didn't look in one direction. Frightened, lest his son had spotted an unseen observer, the boy, the father whispered, Where? Where? His son answered simply, Daddy, you didn't look up. Character is what you do when nobody but God is looking. The older you get, the more you will realize that the things which really count in life are effort, service, and character. Each of us, rich and poor, educated and uneducated, capable and incapable, has a sacred obligation on this earth to do the best we can and to make the land we live on the land we live in and the world we live with a better place because we were here. Look ahead, look to yourself, look up, and God bless you. We want to thank all those who've taken time to listen to the John Birch Society Report, which has again focused attention on important subjects directly involving you. Our commentator today has been Thomas J. Anderson. If you would like a copy of today's message, please send 50 cents for one copy or $1 for three copies to the John Birch Society Report, San Marino, California. Please enclose a stamped, self-addressed envelope. Ask for transcript number.